In this demo, we'll show a few things related to application deployment. First, we'll deploy an application using Docker UCP. Then, we'll see how UCP's role-based access control can protect important systems. After that, we'll see how to identify and patch a vulnerable image. Then finally, we'll see how to roll a non-disruptive update to a live application. So, let's get logged into UCP. And remember, this is a prototype version running Docker 1.12 in swarm mode that we used at DockerCon. So, some of the screens and the likes might look a little different when it chips as GA. But this here is the dashboard. We can see controller health, apps, images, and down here, containers and service uptime, and some node usage. Well, let's go ahead and hit resources here, and then deploy. Now, if you want to deploy single service apps, so consisting of one or more containers of the same type, you'd use UCP's form wizard here. It's really easy. You give it a name, image, permissions, labels, all of that. But we're going to demonstrate a more complex distributed app. So to do that, we'll use the upload bundle feature here. And this is the bundle we want. Okay, straight away, UCP's passed the bundle file and we can see it comprises five services, a network that connects them all, basically the entire application. So to deploy it, all we do is name it and then hit deploy. And that's it. With a single click, we've just deployed a distributed application to our production cluster. So let's take a look at the services. Okay, those are our services and maybe we'll drill into enterprise vote here. Okay, well, we can see it's based on version 1.0 of the image. And we're currently running a single container for this service. We could run more if we needed, but we can also come down here and see network and ports published, volumes, environment variables, and then let's look at labels actually. Now, this DockerCon access label here, we're going to use this in just a minute to demonstrate access control. But for now, we just need to know that this label is applied to all services in this application. So let's take a look at the actual app. Okay, that's up and running, but just on a single container, remember. So let's jump back to UCP and come up here, and if we edit the service, and maybe we can scale it to eight containers. Right, straight away down here. Yeah, we can see the app is already scaling, and we're already at eight containers, all started and fully load balanced. Great. Well, now let's step back and take a look at UCP's role-based access control system. So, I don't know, let's assume that someone from the business needs access to UCP, but corporate policy doesn't allow them to make any changes to production systems. Fine, okay. Up on the user management tab here, we've already got a user here called Ben, the business guy. And he's a member of the business team over here. Now, if we come up to permissions here for the business team, see... Remember that DockerCon access label we saw a second ago? The one that was applied to all services in this app? Well, the business team and its members here, they're restricted to view-only access to any resources tagged with this label. Basically, this means that the business team can inspect the service in the application, but they can't change it. Well, let's go try that out. We'll log in here as Ben... And straight away, we see how the dashboard's more restricted. Well, into services here, okay, we see them all. But if we drill into Enterprise Redis here, let's say we want to try and remove it. Yes, we're sure. Aha, access denied. So yeah, that's role-based access control doing its job protecting the cluster. So let's log back in as admin and take a look at how security scanning integrates with Docker Trusted Registry to identify security-related vulnerabilities in our Docker images. So let's come over here to DTR, and we can see version 1.0 of our voting image here, and it's got three issues found. Well, let's take a closer look. Right, the biggest problem here is a vulnerability with OpenSSL. So what happens is the scanning service scans through all layers in the image and compares its findings against CVE databases for known vulnerabilities. The point being, we've got great visibility into the security of our images right here. Now, once a fix is available, we can take that fix and bring it into any base images that we might have. 
So if we find our terminal window here and pull up the docker build command, right, we're rebuilding our enterprise base image here to version 1.1. And we're using the docker file in our current directory that's obviously going to patch the latest fixed version of the affected package. Well, there it goes, rebuilding the image. And now that the base image is patched, let's push it to our local DTR. OK, that's in DTR now. So, that's our base image patched and pushed to DTR. Now, we need our developer to take that image and update the application based on it. So, if we switch over to our developer's machine to build a new version of the application, first thing, we'll bump the version of the base image here in the application's Docker file. That needs to be 1.1 that we just pushed. Save that. And we need to rebuild the app's image. Okay, that's pulling a new version of the base image. And it's done. That's the app image updated but just locally. Next job, we need to push that new image to DTR. But you know what? A lot of organizations are going to need verification and signing of all production images. Well, fortunately, enabling that is as simple as exporting Docker Content Trust to be one. Then, it's just business as usual pushing and pulling images. Image signing automatically now happens in the background. Okay, so at this point our developer needs to enter his or her passphrase to prove their identity. And that's our updated application image pushed and signed. Well, we'd better skip back to the operations laptop so we can push that into production. Okay, here we go, right. The new 1.1 image is pushed and it's signed. Now it's being scanned. And brilliant, no issues found. Now, to get that into production without any downtime. Well, to do that we'll use Swarm's rolling update feature. So we go resources here, back to the enterprise vote service that was affected. We'll switch the image to be the new 1.1 image that we just signed and pushed. Then we'll set update parallelism to two, update delay to five seconds and finish editing. Now, what's going on here? Well, if you look closely, UCP and Swarm are replacing two containers based off of the 1.0 image with two based on the 1.1 image. And they're doing that every five seconds. Then they're repeating the process. And this is great. I mean, if we have any issues, we can easily stop the update and easily roll back. But yeah, see these updating? With a few clicks, we were able to do a full rolling update to our live application with absolutely zero downtime. And that is powerful. To find out more and to try it yourself, Come and visit us at www.docker.com/ddc.